Hi, it's Emily Lee, part of Art from the Heart, and in this video I'm sharing Paper Smooch's gift boxes made with the Hot Spot Small Base die. This die has been most commonly used as a background for scene cards, but I'm going to show you how easy it is to create gift boxes with this die. Most of the scene cards are created with the opening at the bottom. It's natural to put the sentiment there or use it as the ground. When it's flipped, it looks like a handbag, and the way it forms a natural handle is what made me think of using it for gift boxes. First I'm going to die cut this twice. One piece will form the front of the box and the other piece will be the back of the box. As you saw in one of my videos I had to replace my cutting plates. You can see how super smooth and shiny the new ones are. I also love that they have tapered edges which makes entering the roller so much easier. My original plates don't have this feature. I can only bear to use one for now on the back side of the dies. Next I'm going to trim the cup section of the box. This is the part that holds the gift. This piece is one and a half inches wide by seven and a quarter inches long. Next, I take my scoreboard and score this piece a quarter of an inch from each edge lengthwise. This is where the adhesive will go. Then I turn the piece of cardstock horizontally and score one and three quarters inches from each end, leaving three and three quarters of an inch in the middle. Next I take scissors and cut away triangles from the four intersections. After creating the notches, I can fold along the scored lines. Now I've created the pocket for the treats. I'm going to lay it flat to apply adhesive to the flaps. Here's my example so you can visualize the measurements. This size will hold several mini chocolate bars and almost every other sweet treat. I'm using very strong score tape to make sure the box stays together. Once the backing is removed, I can attach it to one side of the box. All I do is line it up with the base, just a couple of millimeters off the edge, and make sure the sides are parallel to the die cut. Before I adhere the other side of the box, I'm going to embellish it. I've die cut a thanks word using one of the quote tags dies. Next, I'm going to die cut a flower and leaves using the flowers dies. I use glue dots to adhere the flowers and leaves. Then I use my zig glue pen to adhere the sentiment. Next I want to add a clear rock candy embellishment to the center of the flower. Now the panel is complete and I can attach it to the rest of the box. At first I think it would be easier lying it down like a first side, but I decide that standing up the box would be best so it stands and the two sides are level with one another. I just make sure that the side flaps are parallel with the die cut before pressing down on the score tape. Now the box is finished and all I have to do is put something in it. I'm adding some yellow polyfill to show you how it would look all dressed up. Then any sweet treats will nestle nicely in there. Next I'm going to show you how you can use the same technique to create a narrower gift box that holds mini greeting cards. This middle section will be the same length as the first box but slightly narrower at only one inch instead of one and a half inches. For this box I've die cut the hot spot small base twice from craft cardstock. Then for some variation I'm going to use a speckled cream cardstock for the pocket section. That second color in complementary or contrasting colors provides added visual interest. I'm using the example to verify that the width is one inch before trimming. Then I cut the length at one and three quarters inches, just like the first box. Next I'm going to score the strip a quarter of an inch away from the edges lengthwise. 
Again, I turn it horizontal and score one and three quarters inches from each end, leaving three and three quarters inches in the middle section. Then I cut away triangles at the four intersections and fold along the score lines. Again I apply very strong score tape, remove the backing and apply it to one side of the box making sure that all the edges are parallel with the die cut. Next I'm going to embellish the front of the box. This time I'm going to use the Celebrate Word die from the Birthday Words dies and die cut it from the front panel of the box. I didn't think about where it was relative to the adhesive panel, so my solution was to die cut a black panel and adhere it to the back of the existing panel. I want to add some glittery balloons, so I need to snip apart these balloons dies. I decide I'm going to use the small circular balloon and the heart-shaped balloon. After considering their placement, I decide to tie some buttercream baker's twine from the twinery. I love that these balloons have a strong opening for tying twine to them. This prevents the twine from slipping off. The easiest way to tie twine on these balloons is to create the loop, then slip the end of the balloon into it, making sure that the knot is on the back side of the balloon die. I do pull solidly on the knot to make sure it's secure, and I always allow myself extra twine on either side because I can always trim off the extra piece. Fiddling with twine that is too short causes fraying and that's the last thing I want. I'm going to adhere these balloons to the box with some foam tape and I'm also going to add a dab of glossy accents to the back of each knot. This way the twine will never fall off the balloon or the box. In this case, I didn't consider where the foam tape would end up. So it shows in the opening on the back side of this panel. There's an easy fix for it though. Since it's very spongy, all I need to do is pull it away from the edge and trim off the excess. The rest of it just springs back underneath the edge of the die and out of sight. Now I'm going to knot the two balloon strings together trim off the excess twine and add a dab of glossy accents to the underside of the knot to secure it to the box. Once that's all done, I can assemble the box, making sure that all the sides are parallel before pressing down on the score tape. Next, I'm going to create four greeting cards that will go inside this box. These are mini cards at three and a half inches by three inches. It's a great little gift set that the recipient can use for last minute gift giving. To decorate these cards, once again, I'll be using the Celebrate die that I used on the front of the box as well as the balloon dies. Basically, I'm going to replicate the design on the front of the box on all four cards.
The first thing I need to do is tie the twine strings on all eight balloons. Again, I'm making the loop, then slipping the end of the balloon into it, making sure that the knot is on the back side of the die cut. As you can see, I'm applying that dab of glossy accents to each knot to secure it to the balloon. By the time I adhere these to the cards, they will still be wet enough to stick to the card base. This time I'm adhering the balloons with glue dots. After all the cards are completed, so is this box set. Here's a comparison of the two boxes side by side. The one on the left can hold edible treats or even a small toy. The one on the right holds greeting cards and if you stamp on these cards instead of adding embellishments, you can add a flap to the inside of each card to hold a gift card. These are just two examples of gift boxes you can make with the Hotspot Small Base Die by Paper Smooches. Please refer to the supply links below if you're interested in any of the products I used in this video. You can also visit my blog for stills and more information about my cards. Thanks so much for watching.